this week, we've watched human beings break through that two degree Celsius barrier, at least temporarily. That's a really daunting fact. We've gotten more data in the last few months about rapid melt on Greenland and in the West Antarctic. That's super daunting. This year has seen a lot more evidence of fundamental disruptions to the jet stream and the Gulf Stream to big deep ocean currents. So we're playing with things at very dangerous and deep levels that unnerve me and unnerve every scientist I know. And we've begun to see feedback loops on a scale that terrify me. The Canadian wildfires this year are set to put carbon into the atmosphere two or three times the level of carbon that Canada produces with all the driving, cooling, cooking, heating, flying that Canadians manage in the course of a year. So that combination of things makes me very uneasy that we have fallen so far behind the pace of the physics that catching up, even as we are able to deploy renewable energy, I don't think it's technically impossible, but I'm not convinced we can make it line up fast enough. I'm obviously going to keep trying, and I think we have an outside chance at doing it, and that's well worth pursuing. I don't think there's anything actually called renewable energy. The sun, the ball of gas you said, is renewable, but the machines that we build to harness them, solar panels, are no more renewable than a pickup truck or a cell phone. We have to rebuild them in 20 or 25 years. And the materials, the copper, the lithium, the cobalt, and all that is in the global south. It's in places that are already experiencing higher wet bulb temperatures, social strife, et cetera. So I think as we attempt to decarbonize, we're going to rematerialize, and that's not going to be scalable. Well, that, that's um, possible. That's possible. My sense is it's going to take material to do it. There's no question, but that it's going to take quite a bit less than what we're using at present. I think if you think about it for a minute, it's easy for people to grasp that. I mean, yes, you have to go mine lithium to make a battery and you know whatever, but once you've done it, the lithium sits in your battery for a quarter century or however long it lasts doing what it's supposed to do. And that's very different from coal, which you mine. And then the point of mining it is you set it on fire so that you have to go mine some more of it tomorrow. The thing that sticks in my mind, the statistic that really sticks in my mind is that 40% of all the ship traffic on planet earth at the moment is just carrying coal and oil and gas back and forth around the planet to be burned. And that to me gives you some glimpse into actually the kind of dematerialization that may be possible as we move in this direction. But yeah, it's definitely not easy. There's no free lunch. We got to figure out how to do it with some kind of environmental standards and probably more importantly, some kind, kind of humanity, you know, as we do it, that should be within our power to do. But, you know, corporate greed and things are always problems to be dealt with and we shall try.